The topic we're going to cover in this video is standard deviations. You've probably heard standard deviation before. I'm going to try to give you kind of a, an understanding of what it means and then I guess how to calculate it. So um, the standard deviation is denoted by sigma. So that sort of shape there or else people sometimes draw it like that. Uh, like that. There's a few different kind of weird ways of drawing it. But it's sigma anyway, the Greek letter. Um, it's a measure of variation. Okay, which means how spread out the data is. That's what we saw last time with the range and interquartile range. And what the standard deviation, what it actually means is on average, how far is each data point from the mean? Okay, so you have your mean say here, represented by this line on the right, and you have loads of little dots that are all your different data points. So you can imagine there's numbers here, and it's saying on average, how far is each data point from the mean? So for this one here, the standard deviation is probably that size there. So I don't know if that makes sense as an idea, but it's just on average how far away is each um, each data point from the mean. Um, so anyway, here's two, we have two little uh, data sets here. So we have A, which is 1, 3, 7, 10, 15, 24. So the mean of this data set is 10. And then for B, we have 5, 6, 7, 13, 14, 15. So they both have the exact same mean, except A is much more spread out. So it goes the whole way up from 1 to 24. Whereas this B only goes from five to 15. So that means that A has a higher, uh, I'll just say SD for standard deviation, okay? It means it's more spread out. So that's sort of what the standard deviation means. So I guess the next thing we have to worry about is how to calculate the standard deviation. So there is a way to do it with your calculator, um, but I can't really show that on these videos. So I'm gonna show you how to hand calculate it, which they might ask, I, I don't think they would, but there is a formula and you, you should have to know it anyway. Um, I don't think they will ask it, they're probably more likely to ask you to do it on a calculator. So here's the formula for it, I just scribbled it out. So we have sigma over here, we have sigma is equal to the square root of the sum of x minus x bar squared divided by n. So it looks a lot nastier than it actually is, um, I'll show you how, how we calculate it, and it's really just step by step doing a few basic calculations. So in this, so in this formula here, x is just each individual value. X bar is the mean. Uh, the sigma, this sort of big E kind of looking thing, is called sigma, it's another Greek letter, and it means the sum of, so we have to add all of these together. And then n is just the total number of values we have. And then obviously sigma is the standard deviation, the answer. All right, so we will calculate the standard deviation of A, of our first one here, and then I'll get you guys to try B yourselves, all right? So I'll go, scroll down to make some space, make sure we can still see the formula. So I just scribbled out the words here, the, the numbers. So we look for the standard deviation. We know that the numbers are 1, 3, 7, 10, 15, and 24. We know that X bar, which is the mean, is equal to 10, all right? So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna write, we're gonna make a little table. I'll go green for the table green. So we're going to write x, we're going to write x bar, then we're going to have x minus x bar, then we're going to have x minus x bar squared, um, and then we're just going to add all those together. So you'll see how this kind of makes things easier. So the numbers are going to be, so first actually I'll just make a table here. Table, table, there we go. Okay. So we're gonna have one, three, seven, 10, 15, and 24. It all just about fits in. The mean x bar stays as 10 the entire time, so that's fine. Okay, so these are all the different values of x. This is x bar doesn't change. So now it's x minus x bar. So the first one is gonna be minus nine. Second one is gonna be minus seven. This one here, third one is gonna be minus three. And we're gonna have a zero. We're gonna have a plus five and we're gonna have a 14. Okay, so we're taking x and minusing it from x bar each time. And now we're gonna square that number, so x minus x bar squared. So this is gonna be 81, it's gonna be 49. We're gonna have nine, zero, 25. And this one here is gonna be 196, all right? So this is just squaring each of these numbers one by one. And this is why it makes it easy. You can do it in one big line in a formula, but it's just quite messy. So now I'm gonna write the sum of x minus x bar squared. So it's just adding all of these numbers together. So I'll change color now, I'll go to red, I think, just to mix it up a little bit. So if you add all of those up, you're gonna get your answer is gonna be 360. 
So next, all we have to do is I'll just draw a little box. Look at the formula here. So the formula is the standard deviation is equal to the square root of this here, the sum of x minus x bar squared, which is exactly what we've calculated right here. So we're going to say that sigma is equal to the square root of 360 divided by the number, so n, which is the number of values, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, so we're just going to say is equal to 360 divided by 6. Pop that into the calculator and you're going to find your answer is 7.746. And there you have it. So it really isn't too bad if you use this table. I think the table really, really helps. Um, if you can't remember the table, then you can try and figure it out, but it's just a lot harder to do it on one line. And like I said, you can do it in a calculator much easier, um, but I can't show that really on the videos very well. So I'll let you guys try to find the standard deviation of B here, and you should find out that the standard deviation is gonna be less than the standard deviation of A, because it's less spread out. Yeah, um, so give it a shot, use the same method I'd recommend, and then leave your answers down in the comments and I'll tell you if they're right or not. So that's all we have for standard deviation for the moment. In the next video, we're gonna look at percentiles, but we will be seeing standard deviation again, so just make sure you kind of have just an understanding of what it means, I guess. Uh, we won't need to calculate it again, but just as long as you get what it means, uh, that'll come in useful. So again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, like and subscribe and share it with friends, and we'll see you next time for some percentiles.